better known to most of you as Alice. Well, I'm far from Mel's Diner today. I'm here in Toronto, Canada, awaiting the start of the Santa Claus Parade. And with me is Ted Shackelford, who, as Gary Ewing on Knott's Landing, is also far from California. But never far enough away from my big brother, J.R. Ewing. But there are some mighty big doings about to get underway here. A wonderful storybook parade even J.R. couldn't ruin. Oh, listen, while we're on the subject of J.R., there's something I've always wanted to know. Hey, what's that? What do those initials stand for? Just rotten. With a line like that, you better stay far away from Dallas. <laughs> Listen, speaking of Dallas, you know the Dallas cheerleaders? Yeah, well, no, and I, I, I've always wanted to get closer to those ladies. Well, football fans and Ted, in about a minute, you're going to see Philadelphia's pride and joy, the beautiful dancing Liberty Bells. I'll be all eyes. Right now, we're going to go to New York's pride and joy, Bill Conrad. Hello, New York! Good morning and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. While you've been preparing your traditional holiday feast, we've been preparing a traditional holiday feast for your eyes. The CBS All-American Thanksgiving Day Parade. And what a parade of fabulous floats, marching bands, and all your favorite CBS stars. We've got Daryl Anderson of Lou Grant and Joan Van Ark of Knott's Landing to host the parade in Philadelphia. Lovely Charlene Tilton of Dallas and Gordon Jump of WKRP in Cincinnati standing by in New York. Then we're off to see Joan Pringle of the White Shadow and Vic Tabak of Alice in Detroit. Things will warm up after that a lot because we'll be joining Loretta Swit of MASH and Gregory Harrison of Trapper John in Hawaii. And finally, we'll be northward bound again as we head for Toronto and Linda Lavin of Alice and Ted Shackelford of Knott's Landing. So there's much to see. We better be off immediately. Take it away, Daryl Anderson and Joan Van Ark in Philadelphia. Coloma, California may not mean much to you, but it was a major site in American history. It was there in June 1848 that James Marshall discovered gold while constructing a sawmill at Sutter's Fort. Unfortunately for Marshall and John Sutter, the gold in Nimnar Hills tarnished their very lives forever. Their land was completely overrun by prospectors, and the two men were driven from their property. Marshall ended his days as a gardener, and Sutter spent the rest of his life fighting his case in the Supreme Court, which he finally lost. A 24-carat tale of woe. Well, on to happier things, huh? Much happier things. The Santa Claus Parade is about to begin, so let's head for Toronto with Linda Lavin and Ted Shackelford. Hi, I'm Linda Lavin, and this sure is my lucky day. I'm in Toronto, Canada, waiting for the big parade with tall, handsome Ted Shackelford, who is Gary Ewing on Knott's Landing. There will be a brief pause while all of you girls throw a jealous fit. <laughs> Actually, I'm the lucky one. Finally to meet Linda outside Mel's Diner. Linda, do you realize that you are now the most famous Alice since that, since that little girl in Wonderland? Ah, tell me more, tell me more. And Mel's Diner's become pretty famous, too, for bad food. Tell me, Linda, is the food there really that bad? I'll give you an idea how bad the food is. Uh -huh. Our customers take bicarbonate of soda before they eat the food. <laughs> Sugar boom. And uh, I will say this for Mel. On Thanksgiving, he always has a big treat for them. What's that? He closes the diner. Uh -huh. mm. uh, but we're open for business, and our business is the Santa Claus Parade. Coming along right now. Let's watch it. How do kids in Toronto know that Christmas is coming? When they first get their glimpse of this friendly fella, Pumpkinhead. He's the lovable bear that's advanced man for Santa Claus. And as you see, he's just leaving Toyland with a train load of presents heading for Eaton's department store. Some train, isn't it? The engine looks like the late model used on our Amtrak lines. And on each side, there are two big candy canes. So kids, that isn't a choo-choo, it's a lick-lick. Well, here comes what you might call the men's liberation movement. And that's a lot of movement, isn't it? This fine feathered friend is not Mother Goose, my friends. It's Father Gander. And the little lady he's taking for a ride is actually Mother Goose. And the way his mouth keeps moving, he's probably giving her that old husband-to-wife line, get off my back, will you? <laughs> and what better time than this for a little fiddle talk? Linda, do you know how to get down off a goose? Gee, I don't know how to get up there in the first place. Ah, uh, shaboom, yes. Thank you, Henny. <laughs> 
The title of this float reminds me of a boy bragging about his exploits with girls. Oh, come on. It's the land of make-believe. Yeah. And it's loaded with familiar friends from our childhood. There's the lion and the unicorn. With a single horn, he'd make a good pretzel holder. Little Bo Peep about to lose her sheep, and that's bad. And there are some good friends of ours, George Cash and his band. Hey, George. All right. Here comes the most famous fairy story heroine of all. It's Cinderella. And she's riding in a royal coach with her handsome husband, the prince, on their way to live happily ever after. They're probably reminiscing about that fabulous night when they first met, and he's saying to her, are you ready for this? We really had a ball. <laughs> With a knick-knack paddywhack, this old man came oh, rolling me. home. Here comes a float with a lot of soul. The shoemaker and the elves, or a dream come true. Lenny, you remember the story? Tell this old shoemaker was really down at the heels. He only had enough leather for one more pair of shoes. So he cut out the pieces and went to bed, planning to put them together next morning. During the night, a group of friendly elves sneaked in with more leather, sewed up lots more shoes, and put the old man back in business. The moral? Right. Shoemakers should always put things off till the last. Or if the shoe fits, send in the elves. Calling all cats, calling all cats. There's a rat at the corner of University and Bloor Streets. What a rat. I bet everyone listens when he says cheese. It's a beautiful white coat he has, and his eyes, and ears, and tail are really in the pink. Uh -huh. This is a famous rat named Peppy, one of those rats that were driven out of the fairy tale town of Hamlin. And riding on his back is an even more famous character, the Pied Piper. Wasn't he one of the group that sang with Tommy Dorsey's orchestra? No, I think that was old Blue Eyes. <laughs> this Pied Piper played his flute and led all the rats out of Hamlin and left its citizens with those famous last words, now keep your trap shut. <laughs> These are the little people from that special kind of outer space called Fairyland. They're the magic mushrooms and toadstools. And some Fairyland snails. Also frogs. Say, girls, if you uh, pick the right frog, kiss it, it'll turn into a prince. Which is okay if you like a guy with long green legs. It's not easy being green. <laughs> no. Or purple. The larger toadstools are thrones for fairy princesses. And on the one at the very back, the great big one, there she is. There she is. Is a good friend of fans of this parade. She's Caroline Carmichael, the lovely daughter of Jim Carmichael, who designs and builds all these floats. Take a look, good look at Caroline. This is her farewell appearance as a princess. The next time we see her, she'll probably be a queen. Beauty queen, that is. <gasps> oh, my it's great. Goodness. <laughs> uh, you folks at home may want to move back a bit from your TV sets, because this here critter is a muy ferocious. It's a dragon. Ah. Not just any old dragon, either. This is Speckleback, writhing and twisting its way out of the history books. I guess you could call it a run of the mill. A steel mill, that is. Its body is iron, its head steel, and its claws are beaten brass. <laughs> if you were the fortune in a junkyard. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. The fellow riding on top will give you a clue to the story. He's St. George, the brave knight who finally killed this dragon. And why did St. George do it? I'll bite. Okay. Oh, no. Because of the dragon's special diet, a dozen innocent citizens for each meal. So St. George gave him his just desserts. That line is from hunger. Oh, yeah. Now get ready to meet a famous traveler. It's Jonathan Swift's globe-trotting hero, Gulliver. Big, isn't he? Yeah. But that's only because we're seeing him now in the land of those little people called the Lilliputians. And here we have a high spot of his visit. See, the enemies of the Lilliputians had gathered a fleet of sailing ships to attack them, but Gulliver came to the rescue. He just waded over to the enemy's harbor, tied up their ships with string, and pulled them back to his friends, the Lilliputians. And he looks pretty pleased with himself, doesn't he? He does. 
Well, just Whaley moves on to his next stop, the land of the Giants. To give you some idea how big those Giants were, when they wanted salad for dinner, they poured oil and vinegar on the front lawn and grazed. I didn't write this. <laughs> Whoa. The song some band should be playing right here is Hold That Tiger. There's the tiger, all right. It looks too big for anybody to hold, except maybe the Incredible Hulk. It's licorice, the circus tiger, what the Barker might call two tons of feline ferocity. And Linda, let's take care of that old line right away, okay? You ready? It's possible, yes. All right. Where does a tiger that big sleep? Everybody all together? Anywhere it wants to. Okay. This beautiful parade just goes on and on and on. And we'll go on right with it, right after this. We're back in Toronto with this fabulous Santa Claus parade. But before you go on, Ted, I know you've yeah. long since left Dallas and your brother J.R. Ewing, but I just wanted to ask you, how mean is he? <laughs> I'll give you an idea how mean he is. He sends get well cards to hypochondriacs. He'd throw a drowning man both ends of the rope. He'd knife you in the back and then have you arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Now that's me. <laughs> but this is fun, isn't it? Yes, it is. The Santa Claus Parade in Toronto. This may be the most amusing amusement park you'll ever see, at least on wheels. It's an ingenious replica of Canada's famous new park called Wonderland. And they're in the park amusing themselves as well as all the kids along the parade route of the Flintstones. Hey. See, the whole gang is there. See if you can recognize them. I can. Okay. Fred and Wilma Flintstone, a couple that really make sparks fly. Betty and Barney Rubble with, with son Bam Bam. <laughs> they liked him so much they named him twice. <laughs> the cowardly dog, Scooby-Doo. Actually, he's a Sooner dog. Sooner eat than do anything else. <laughs> Huckleberry Hound, Quick Draw McGraw. Good old Yogi Bear. Hey, Yogi. What do you say? Yogi. Yogi. Yes. And there's that Chinese character, Hong Kong Fui. You laugh at him, and a half hour later, you feel like laughing again. What's funnier than a barrel of monkeys? I don't know. Here's the answer, a float filled with clowns. There's a big clown to get the big laughs, a tall one for the long laughs, and best of all, we have Daddy, I'm sorry, Dandy, and his clown band. Hi, Dandy. And they always play appropriate music, songs like, I'll be a clown to get you in a taxi, honey. Oh. It's a lonesome old clown. You ain't nothing but a clown dog, or would you rather just listen to them play? Yes, yes, please, please. Just ask me. <laughs> this lovely Eaton's Parade has been recorded, so you won't miss any of it. Whoa. Would you like to look out the window some morning and find this critter in your backyard? Well, it's not likely to happen, because this is Max, the muskox. And Max lives way up north near the Arctic Circle. You want to know how you got there? I do. Okay. How did get here? Just since you didn't fly, at least not first class. You can see that Max is all set for cold weather around the North Pole with his thick, shaggy coat. In fact, the muskox holds the record of having the longest hair of all living creatures, with the exception of some rock singers and Patrick Duffy. In the winter, kids have fun building a snowman, but did you ever wonder how a snowman has fun? No. Nope. Neither did I. But anyway, here's an answer in a lovely float called a winter frolic. Some huge snowmen are sliding down a hill. This is a lovely float indeed. And there's another one that the kids just built. All I can say is these snowmen are much better built and better dressed than the ones we made when I was a kid. Somehow our snowman always leaned to the left and his head was always set crooked on his shoulders. <laughs> and our timing was always wonderful. We'd get the snowman finished about dark and then that night came a big thaw and then you looked out in the next yard and Sammy Snowman was Perry Puddle. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to cold weather, most birds are chicken, so they fly south for the winter. Well, but a few, that is. And here are some of our hearty feathered friends who hang around up here in the frozen north. Okay, you see that blue one? All right, it's a loudmouth blue jay that wakes you with its loud squawking on winter mornings. And the yellow one is crowsbeak. Bright one's a cardinal, just moved from St. Louis. And there's the wise snowy owl. And say, friends, if you're wise, You'll be sure to tune in to CBS tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern Time for Linda Lavin's first TV special, Linda in Wonderland. 9 o'clock Central and Mountain. Indeed. Linda in Wonderland. Thank Linda you so Wonderland. much. I'm happy yes. you're talking about this. Tell me about it. Oh, you want to hear more? Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. This is a musical variety gala that Linda says she's been busy planning since age two. 
Page two, no wonder she flunked kindergarten. Special guest stars are Lynn Redgrave, Anthony Newley, and Rod Ron Lee. That's tonight at 10 on CBS. Tonight at 10 on CBS. Nine Central America. I hope you all will watch it and enjoy it. When you see a sleigh pulled by a flying horse, then you know you're in fantasy land, or you've just been hit by a truck. <laughs> and this is a fantasy on ice. As you see, the road is ice, the hills are ice, and riding in the sleigh is the ice princess. Say, fellas, how would you like her to give you the cold shoulder? And back there, high up on the ice mountain, is the castle of the ice king and the ice queen. Oh, I can't say this. All right, then I guess I will. I understand there are a couple of good skates or gay blades. Listen, you know, I'm not too big on ESP, but something tells me it's time to take a break. Oh, yes, that, that something is the stage manager standing there trying to slash his throat with his finger. Ah, uh, so let's shut up before he succeeds. Oh, too late. We're back at the Santa Claus Parade. I'm still Ted Shackleford, alias Gary Ewing on Knott's Landing. You are. Yeah. And I'm still Linda Lavin, though the customers at Mel's call me Alice. And you know, I watch your show a lot, Linda, and I think I'd really like to work with you there. Oh, thanks, but why would you want to leave a great show like Knott's Landing? One TV magazine called it a cauldron of desires, emotions, and passions. Wow, that makes my Latin blood boil, my Latin blood boil. Yeah? Why don't you come and join us? Oh, maybe I will. Thank you very much. But right now, we're going on with this terrific, lovely parade. When is a skirt not a skirt? When it's a bell. Or, put another way, when is a bell not a bell? When it's a skirt. That's what we have here. Some big, colorful bells that are being worn as skirts. Maybe that's where they got the expression, kicking the gong around. Surely, yes. <laughs> this is a lovely cloud. Yeah. Wearing those pretty bells are some lovely bells. Girls, that is. Yeah, it must have been quite an experience for them before the parade, being lowered into their clothes. I hope they don't get any itches in these Musical history. Tchaikovsky and his wife were nibbling on Christmas goodies when he said to her, Helen, anything you want, darling? And she said, yes, the nutcracker, sweet. Uh, 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 uh. And so he wrote it for her. He called it My Blue Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Here we have one of the highlights from the ballet based on the music, the dance of the sugar plum fairies. Hi, little fairy sweethearts. As you can see, this float really takes the cake. Big cakes, little cakes, even cupcakes. Those dancers ought to be doing a cakewalk. There's the Nutcracker General who led his army in a battle against the wicked mice and just squeaked out a victory. And of course, the Sugar Plum Fairy is dancing on a big cake in front of those candy canes. And now you see why the Nutcracker is called a sweet. You're terrific. Thank you. Now we're gonna have a ball. Probably the biggest ball in the city. It's a Christmas tree ball. If you think that's big, you ought to see the tree. <laughs> this whole float was inspired by that, that time-honored Christmas Eve custom of trimming the tree. Gee, look at all those fancy, colorful trimmings, flashing and sparkling as they turn around and around. Linda, you know, I remember when we had some fancy tree trimmings when I was a kid. One year, everybody was into the do-it-yourself craze. So we took needle and thread and made a long string of popcorn, which we hung on the tree. Uh -huh. And we used that popcorn string year after year, even took it to the movies. So finally it got so grubby, we had to eat it. <laughs> Did you ever string cranberries? <laughs> yeah, sauce. Well, friends, here it is. Better watch out, better not frown, better not pout time. Because Santa Claus is coming to town. He's here! And what a great reception he's getting from the crowds along the street.
Street. Dear old Santa, he's always the same fat, jolly old self. Yeah, but I want you to know these reindeer that are bringing into town this year are brand new. They look terrific. Well, Linda, this is what our parade's all about. The first visit of Santa Claus in the new decade of the 1980s. So let's all enjoy it. Have you forgotten we're going out together tonight? We are? Yeah. Does your wife know about this? <laughs> no, I mean, we're going out on the CBS network. And not exactly together. You'll be following me. Oh, yes, yes. You'll be on with Not Not Landing tonight at 9 o'clock. Right, and then at 10 o'clock comes your big special, Linda in Wonderland. Yes. I hope you all will watch it. We've really been together here today, Ted, and I've had a lovely time. Linda, I've enjoyed it very much myself. Good. Y'all have a nice Thanksgiving. Goodbye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Don't eat too much turkey. Bye-bye. But eat a lot of stuffing. Thank you for being with us. Lots of cranberries. Thank you, Ted and Linda. We'll be watching for your special Linda in Wonderland on CBS tonight. Hey, we've certainly seen a lot of celebrations today in honor of Thanksgiving, but I would like to correct one last bit of common misinformation before you sit down to your turkey dinner. That uh, fine feathered fowl did not get its name because it was incorrectly thought to have originated in Turkey. It got its name because it was incorrectly thought to have originated in India. It was named by Christopher Columbus, who, you'll recall, thought that he had landed in India, and he thought that Turkey, with its fan-like tail feather, was a peacock. So he called it a tuka, which is the word for peacock in India. Uh, and if you're confused by that, you're going to have to stand in line. I'll be back to say goodbye right after this.